I would like to introduce uh, actually from your from your um, from the bonjour. Then you just find four people per person, but you find just two person here. Why? Why there's just two person? Because one of the uh, one of the speakers, uh, Birdman, is just her wife. Uh, his wife is just a called baby, and also ended up speaker PK simply um, her, his girlfriend is just back to Taiwan. So um, both of them is. Uh, the reason cannot to come here is because of women. <laughs> so, um, so it's a very happy moment, right? So, anyway, um, this this time I am Benson. We will take over two hours, but you know we cannot spend two hours because we are not the style reading the slides. If you go for some kind of reading slides, just uh, we will not be on the stage. So we have some kind of demonstration. Okay. Um, and also some tools for you to, to play, it, play with, okay? And some case studies to, to, for you to, to take a look, okay? Maybe let's start. Um, first of all, I'm Anthony. Um, he's Benson Wu. Then also our, our research uh, founders um, is Jeremy. Jeremy Chiu is uh, Birdman. He's our uh, alias is Birdman. And also another independent security researcher, PK. Okay. We need to add disclaimer. There's no national secrets here. Okay? We welcome spies, secret surface, intelligence for instructions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, no? No any Taiwanese spy or Chinese spy, uh, Russian spy, no? 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 Raise your hand, no? I, I give, I'll give you a cake, okay? A pony, okay? Okay, there's a cake for you then. Okay? Thank you very much, thank you. Aliado. Advertisement time. It's always, you got a movie, you have an advertisement, you know, right? Okay, I need to advertise uh, Truth Group members. Um, actually, it's a Taiwanese very famous security and hacking groups. It starts from 2004 and uh, focus on security and hacking studies. And he's just the sponsor or just the supporting organization this year for Black Hat U U USA 2011. And also, um, he has two speakers speaking uh, two days ago on about uh, Exploitation on the document, um, document malicious document. Also, there's a and a conference is a hack in Taiwan conference. Then is the largest scale of the hacking conference in Taiwan. Um, actually, talks war game and food. Come on, come here, right? <laughs> Even I'm come from Hong Kong, man. <laughs> but it's good. I I go there for I, I went there for two times. But the the atmosphere, um, professionalism, everything is good and got some kind of English interpretation. Then happen on every July, okay? And there's a link for you for reference. Um, my founder group since 2009, since actually I founded this group because I'm inspired by DEF CON. Because DEF CON is really a, a cool conference with contests, with many talks, and um, with, with many people to meet up. You're nice, and also with drinks. <laughs> so um, that's really good conference. Or I could say it's an international conference. So. I back to Hong Kong and then hold it, uh, a group to to more to organize more uh, hacking security research studies, and we have just published pa some papers like the for, uh, Facebook forensics, and kinds of web app security feng shui for Macau and Hong Kong. You know feng shui? Do you know feng shui? Okay, no move feng shui. Or put like put a stone in the in the in the door, something like you make you wealthy, something like that. Okay, don't, don't trust. I don't know. <laughs> And also there's a case studies about, uh, I investigate into a case about uh, uh, the lost the money for the bank children. Got the title is Million Dollars Lost in a Minute. So just feel free to, to visit our sites then. And also uh, I want to promote um, the Will Smith because he partners with me and Colin Ames last year to give this kind of talk about the China made malware. Thank you very much. And they have a blog in attackresearch.com that I suppose is a very insightful blog. That's enough, Anthony, right? Let's start, okay. Um, last year, uh, Will Smith, Colin Ames, and I worked together analy analyzing China-made malware. We would like this year continue st as this effort. Um, this year, then, we deal with many um, target attacks. Actually, the, um, Benson, Batman, and PK come from, um, come from Taiwan. For me, it comes from Hong Kong. Um, in Hong Kong, there are also some kind of um, target attack, not just Taiwan, okay? We are not unknown, man. Taiwan is, uh, is also the major, and Hong Kong is also the major 
um, being the target, being attacked. Then we would like to be happy to be pre, uh, present here. And we, will, we, are, we are selected in the first round in the DEF CON, but we are rejected at Black Hat. Their reason is we are curious about your automatic analysis. Uh, any, any, uh, we will come to T-Bot in Black Hat from here. Because uh, Jeff told me there's uh, 400 and 500 review board members. OK, I, I give the kick to him. OK, I just, just, just a lazy kick. <laughs> and reference talk is uh, TT um, and also uh, Lenniker present yes, two days ago about uh, uh, reference, reference of target attack, modern document exploit techniques. And also the next session is uh, Mahmoud about sticky PDF. So it is more than just like a collection. So I would like to, to you have kinds of put it all together to a different focus, OK? Oh, introduce myself. Myself, you call me Anthony, or you call me Daphoid, because just kind of handle. I'm based on code audit, penetration test, crime investigation, and being consultant, anything, and teaching something, teaching like in the um, Polytechnic University in Hong Kong, and spoken in last year, and being guest instructor in the technical exploitation in the Brad Hat USA course. Oh, yeah, I, I, left, I left Benson to introduce himself. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, my name is Benson. Uh, Berman and then PK and I, uh, we are all from Taiwan. And uh, we are from the same lab, uh, called Secure Lab. Uh, well, the truth that they couldn't come actually is because it's, it's really expensive to come over to Las Vegas. It costs us like, you know, uh, more than 2,000 bucks just for the air flight. Uh, so, uh, well, we, we can only afford uh, one of us to come over. And uh, we, we study a lot about uh, APT uh, since uh, starting this year. Uh, before that, we actually uh, do a lot of uh, commercial products. But then uh, we feel that uh, APT is so serious that we want to really focus on APD uh, starting this year. Uh, so uh, beginning this year, you will see more and more stuff that we will uh, develop and then we would like to share with the community. So uh, the tool that we, we cannot disclose here is, is freely available online. And then if you guys receive any sample that you think that is from APD group, then you can just scan online. It's totally free. Uh, I also would like to mention that uh, uh, I'm, I'm from an academic background, and even though uh, I, I have some diploma before, but that doesn't stop me from being hacked. Uh, uh, I remember that when I was in, in the university doing my master, and my friends in, in the, in the uh, National Security Agency told me that, hey, Benson, I found one of your computer in, in the enemy's uh, CNC servers. And I was really surprised because I thought that I can protect my machine well. So uh, that actually uh, told me a lesson that uh, diploma doesn't give you anything when it, it, it's on the cyber warfare. So uh, I, I really feel that, uh, well, you, you have to equip yourself with some hands-on when it's about uh, cyber warfare. That's why uh, later on uh, we, we end up doing a lot of uh, 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 commercial products and then a lot of uh, research on these kind of stuff rather than you know, uh, simply publishing papers. Okay. Thank you, Benson. Um, actually, he, he has not introduced himself, just academic background, okay. But he is very good at we will threat analysis. We have worked out for the Security ex Lab in Taiwan, in, between Hong Kong and Taiwan. We'd like to c contribute this kind of research and service. Um, Birdman, you can't see his face. He's always like that. Not really strange. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know how he can get his, this kind of hat, but anyway. Um, he very, very, very expertise in the Win32 and Linux background uh, platforms on the Windows programming. He, he is the first one in, in Taiwan to spread, not he spread out, but he produced kinds of Trojan or bird spy and then and being manipulated by other people and spread out, spread out uh, in the wild. And uh, Taiwan, Taiwan is police catching up, catching up. And uh, after a while, then the police said, OK, I will release you then, OK? The, the idea is, please be, help us for investigation in the future. So free members, huh? free employee, that's good. Then. Uh, to do the forensics, assist some kinds of digital forensics and uh, investigation uh, instance response. And um, he's good for rootkit backdoor design. Um, 
he, he's, a, he's a good man, okay? If, even he's doing kinds of a lot of evil design, but he, he do a lot of training, okay? Um, PK, and he's from law enforcement, and also he, he's the independent um, security researchers. He's also good at also, uh, system programming, Windows programming, forensics, and he, have, he has done, um, uh, developed a, a, a software called M MPA Scan. MPA is kind of um, uh, a police force in Taiwan, so it could, it could be download, downloadable for in the Taiwan, Taiwan police uh, website. But I know some, some kinds of reason, some people target this software for attack, and, but he's a very nice, very expertise uh, reverse engineer and, uh, and uh, system programmers. Okay, um, start our agenda. i sorry then, I spent five to 10 minutes to about to intro introduction then. Um, APT stuff is, P think, I, actually I don't know the terms comes from, but it is easy for people to say it is a target attack, but everything attack, every attack, target person may be quite advanced. But um, it's specialized target for a spe spe specific company, organization, and also it's from organized from a group, organized attack parties. Other than, other than providing the case studies, I would like to present and analyze the APT from malicious email documents throughout our uh, automatic analysis, okay? And later on, Benson will present about the DNA clustering of different APT task force. For example, you have the, some bad trial society like um, 14K, different K, okay? Different trial society parties, then it is the same ideas of this dif different APT task force here. We have observed there are three major types of the target attack email. For example, the phishing mails, you get a username, ID, and password, and also when you could get an email with the, some malicious script um, in your, when you open some emails, maybe execute some malicious script, or even some documents, and then you deploy the malware and become a botnet and contact the CNC server for further, for further compromise. This is what we have observed. The table is damn small here, but anyway, but we have got a difference here. This pen is very powerful, okay? You can hear, right? <laughs> right, this was, um, AP, there's a, this column, okay? APT botnet activities. This column is uh, traditional botnet activities. Actually for distribution for the APT, or I talk about, for example, APT botnet activities, more organized run, and also not cause any damage. If damage your machine, they have no, no games to pay, right? And they of course target for a specific group and also for a particular company. And the effection, effective duration of the attack group is very long. It's very long, for long duration. And the frequency, um, many times, because they would like to launch it um, from different perspective, maybe the same dropper, but in different uh, email formats. Their reference is more than as a zero days, and some drop and dropping the embedded malware. And finally, the detection rate in the antivirus software is simply is less than 10%. Okay, exciting part is coming. Case studies against a political party in Hong Kong. Okay, we're calling from Mr. X. He always wake me up at six o'clock. I don't know why he wakes me up at six o'clock for calling me to, for help like that. Okay, Mr. X is one of the key person, key person from of, of our political party. It's like a democracy party. He dropped, dropped us an email. He feels suspicious, like the attachment called meeting.zip and also minutes.zip something. And it contains two files. One is the agenda doc, doc and also minute, minutes.doc. And why he feels suspicious? Because he just gave the meeting yesterday, uh, before he received the email. And, and he got this uh, document, it's very, I mean, it's very, it is in coincidence. So um, he looks like a member meeting agenda. However, it targets all the committee's members in the meeting. And Mr. X also said he got this kind of mails before 4th of June, 1st of July, and before any um, legislative or council member election. You know, 4th of June, it's kind of, kind of Tiananmen incident. And 1st of July is kind of a day we turn, Hong Kong return to China. So it's uh, re very regular. Uh, instead of some October, because 
um, those guys may be on vacation on holidays, so they did not launch any target attack because they need to on vacation as well. Okay. So um, I run the an very brief analysis in our uh, XQ uh, secure analyzer engine, but actually this is not um, a document. It's a PE file, okay, and also it's a dropper files, and it creates um, the mini doc doc is a document shortcut file, and which triggers the, to execute the agenda dot doc. Okay, this is our engine. One of the screenshots. Then um, you will find that from the startup folder. Okay, I point here. Start up folder, once you execute, it creates another file, i.e. check.exe. And then afterwards, it generates the code, generates the DLL, MSVCR. It looks like where we uh, legitimate DLL files, but it, it isn't, right? And inject into the explorer.exe for, for kinds of um, uh, injection, DLL injection. Then it collects network different CNC servers. Here. So let me show you. Yeah, because of time, oh, there's no time limitation because, yeah. Then you'll find it here. This is our agenda doc, okay. Uh, I want to zoom it because uh, I'm, I'm quite sure you can see it at the end, in the back, and the doc, and I submit it. This, uh, yeah, from Hong Kong. The CNC server is from Hong Kong. Hong Kong is other than shopping center, it's also a CNC heaven, okay? Uh, yeah, come to Hong Kong, okay? Deploy the CNC server. <laughs> and then you will find a report here. Okay, that's what I, I capture in my slide. But anyway, here is what ha we, ha we have shown and analyzed. Because if every time you need to put up the VM and get the analysis, then it's very a boring job, right? Every time you put up a VM, every time you run the, run the executable, for every samples, I don't think it's a fun, right? So we do it on the automatic analysis. Brahat, have you seen it? Yeah, thank you. But it's, very, it's not the the, our, our core dish or main dishes, okay? But just like that. What? How, how long? How long? Maybe just 30 seconds to one minute. It's not bad then. Then go for a couple of those, then back, then the results comes up. Okay, back to the slide. Well, here is quite very silent. Yesterday, I in my hotel room, there's a lot of rock music underground, and the woman shout, man shouts, wow, over the night. Then, it's amazing. I don't, <laughs> yeah, shouts from the other rooms. <laughs> I can't sleep actually. <laughs> so analyze, analyze our analysis the UCNC location. You find it from Hong Kong. And the, the post is, is uh, 8080. Actually, the case is still alive. Um, they, the CNC server is still here. So I, I'm not aligned here because we are writing a paper. Then we'll submit to um, the forensics and some conference and malware conference. Then bef before the law enforcement just, kick, uh, just t um, join in to inference our result. Some um, traditional t intelligence of analyzed uh, malware, like the, um, use the ca um, capture bat, what files is create, what files is delete, right? And also like what kind, yeah, it's, it supports what, what I've told you about our uh, analyzer, um, what files is uh, added by the, um, by, the, by the system after the malware executed, and uh, you to prove it. Uh, the, and also like uh, IPsec step.dat is added to the explorer.exe to kind of um, encryption for the for IPsec channel to back to the CNC servers. 
Okay, some files added. I don't go through it because, but I would like to see that like that they simply generated the MSVCR, but the file is not like that. It should be MSCVR, right? Uh, in the if the the file is legitimate and is approved by the Microsoft, is signed up Microsoft. The name is quite confusing, and different files are added here. So afterwards, the agenda doc doc is is deleted. We have got some analysis. Okay, he targets QQ. Anyone have QQ? Anyone have QQ? Anyone? No one? I would like to give up the the, bake, the, the, the cake. Oh, no QQ, okay. But if you go to China, if you need to make friends in China, you need a QQ, okay? The first thing is like the ICQ, like the instant messenger, you need a QQ. And QQ can do anything, including to remote control a software, Okay, they have some capability to control remote software computer, and also it could also to capture some screens or send message, send file. Yeah, and m many children writers focus and take over, uh, take the advantage of the function of the QQ, and also force mail. Force mail is also like um, here. Force mail is also like a China, China um, prevalent um, mail service. Of course. Um, we have the, our good friends, Messenger. Yeah, Messenger is also our good friends to act, uh, talk, uh, the attack target. So, um, also then, it's proved the, it injected to the explorer.exe. Not a surprise, but I would like to see. DLL, you know this Chinese word. It's kind of DLL injection failure. It's written in Chinese. That's good. They make the, the programmers give the command. In the, give a command to say the DLL injection failed in Chinese. <laughs> I like it. I like the comments. Well documentation. <laughs> and also, as you say, you find it. I got, right here is the explore.exe. But besides, there's his brother, SVC host. Why? When I an analyze the sample, I can't find any injection to the SVC host. I will tell you later. Okay, the agenda doc doc is nothing special. It's just a dropper. Okay, create an IE, I check the .exe, copy the files, WS2 help .pnf to the application data folder, change the less that .exe and generate the msvcr.dll, malicious DLL, and inject to the explorer.exe. And there's a create mutex. It's very strange, you know. They will create mutex, but it's common for a software to create different thread, different pros, different thread when running the programs. And of course, some traditional checking, like check whether they have a Kaspersky or have any log 32. I don't want to show here, but target the QQ, MSN, Sina, Fosmail, and Hotmail. And also, they use. XOR encoding only. They don't use a uh, very complicated encoding or encryption scheme because if you do some very complicated encoding scheme, it will be detected, most likely detected by the IPS or some uh, uh, detection by the IPS or network detection monitoring. Um, let me check. It's here. But you know, it's quite difficult, you know, I'm here. The screen is there, but it comes to point here. But anyway, show it like to, oh, sorry. Something that is encoded. This XOR is here, the XOR. Wow, you need to have a telescope. Have you got a telescope? Actually, DEFCON should supply it, I know. <laughs> then there's an encode here, then looping, looping, oh, looping. And then you'll find the words is decoded here. Actually, every time you send out the traffic, they will encode the traffic. And once they receive it, they will decode it. They don't, they don't do any complicated encryption. OK. Once we have to do the, we know, figure out the scheme, then we find out they, they get the host name and also the OS type and the patch level. Then there should be more information sent to the CNC server. And also, this is what. We are, this is the most humble day, most humble 
of my day because of the day. Because you know, we found the BM, uh, .bmp files compressed in a .docap file under application folder. However, we are doing screen capture by Wildshark, but it is captured by the by software and sent back to the CNC server. <laughs> so, so this is the this is the screenshot. We do the sleeving, the network, use the route shock, but send back to the CNC server. Damn it. <laughs> okay, taking into the tiger's mouth. Okay, some more than that. Like um, if you do the analysis, most likely you just analyze the dropper, right? You go to the um, like uh, different and threat expert or whatever different um, online sandbox, they just analyze the dropper files and they will not carry out further analysis. So we carry out further analysis and try to install the QQ, MSN, and see what's going on. And we find that more binaries will have, have been downloaded to the Windows debug folder. And also malware creates more files in the Windows debug data folders as well. But those files, when after the fo those files executed, it will be removed shortly, okay? And also they send back to the CNC server in different compressed format. So we find it, those CNC servers send an instruction to the victim machine to compress the files and send them back to the CNC server. That's also quite interesting is that the traffic sequence number they set by the CNC server. If you have been infected before, if you would like to, um, to try it out, to analyze, then the binaries will not be downloaded again. But it is not a surprise, but they have the sequence number to control. So we need to change the registry to blank out that uh, sequence number. It's set in the registry. So it is quite tricky. And also they have put those files in the cap compressed file, but they put the DLL, dot DLL files, different DLL files, and compressed in cap files. However, after we decompress the cap file, we got different SAM system information from the Richter machines um, from, the, from those DLL files. Okay, let's see like that. We find this. This, uh, like a drive file in the .cat file, they capture everything, all your files, the path, and also this. Uh, yeah, uh, this password. Uh, Donald Jen uh, is not our, our member. He's just uh, the chief executive of Hong Kong. Okay, we just just take him as a fake email address. Okay, then <laughs> it's better, right? So you find that they have put it in this kind of test format without encryption. After carrying out the dynamic analysis, we got three more binaries. We got it. With these three more binaries is, one is responsible for to collect all hard disk drive, it's a FVC win32.exe, and create a file drive under C Windows debug, you have just seen it before, right? And also other files called SV AVC win32.exe. After, after execute some, uh, 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 a short period of time, it, it is renamed as SVC win32.exe afterwards. And it put it all of the data to capture all the connect email accounts, passwords, like the files I, I, I show you, and same information, system information, to the app data temp directory, and also the Windows debug data directory and the C drive then. And also one more, one more binary is acvwin32.exe is capture the screenshot for every 1,000 milliseconds. The injected as MS Actually, it should be at vcr.dll keeps on monitoring the C, C drive Windows directory, this debug directory. If there's any files there, they will send it out. So um, this is the summary. This is the summary then. Actually, it targets the political party in Hong Kong, and the CNC server is in Hong Kong, but this China-made APT is, I could claim, this case is long advanced persistent threat. Why? Not very really not really advanced because it contains some old bake routines. Win95, Win98, win the programmers simply just add the new features. Maybe the boss asks him, okay, add one more features for Windows 7, okay, add one more routines. 
the old, old routines just left behind, just left aside, okay? And also there's a, the, the dropper is the same to, to another, another sample. I, I've got a .chm sample, and then the dropper is the same. Oh, I forget to show you something like in my, here. Um, it's my first time, not first time, it's, it's very rare to open the IDA in Mac. And also I have not renewed the license. Yeah, expired. <laughs> but anyway, then simply, you always use IDA in the Windows environment. This DLL is the, is done the, um, the MSC, MSCVR.DLL. Then we could find it. It packed the file as cap. I need to use this one. Put it at the cap file. Yep. And also, it's a very interesting. They put some different extension, like .v2. You never know what is .v2 is. Um, another interesting stuff is the, not cap screen, but connect password. Can you shut it off, then, this one? Um, get password, for example, the get MSN. Messenger MSN password. Also for Outlook password. Yeah, they're, they're quite good for collecting different password from different software. So if you want to jump from APT, Simply not try to use this one, this software, but you can't do that, right? And, uh, yep, to do a password. And also, let me check some very interesting, yep, this is called a password. And one more is the, like the cap screen. I need to show it because it used some old damn screen capture routine in the Visual Basic. So that's the reason why I say this is not really, really advanced. Sorry then, I need to hear. Yep, let's see. Here, right? Uh, create some, create DC is, I think it's traditional, but it's very old. Some kinds of um, capture the screen or write, write the bitmap stuff. It's already very old. Okay. So that's the reason I, I already show you about that. Okay, let's continue. And the agenda doc, the doc doc is just packed with UPX. XOR is, is used instead of some complicated encryption. Then download the payload in different stages. The most important is they use some unpopular file extension, like k2.v2, you never know. And I suppose the IPS or, I, or IDS, they don't recognize this kind of very weird format, right? And they simply build in, like uh, dependent on the built-in libraries. And I find that they use the proper sequence set up by CNC server to manage the victim. This is the, we, we could conclude, I have got two samples and I find that they, their droppers are the same. You find here, this is the agenda.doc. This another one is the another executable for my collector sample of .chm sample. You find it, they're really the same, except this spark, okay? So I suppose they will just use the same droppers for different teams or even the same team. This is the timeline um, my, fellows, um, my fellow went to has, promo, has drafted. Um, actually, the green one is the sample, .chm sample. The wet one, oh, sorry. The wet one is the agenda the doc I present here the case. We have found that the PU build time of the .chm sample, and then we could find the agenda the doc, the build time is near the same, near 
is around the time. It's April, between April and July. And we will find that also the fishing mails and also the fishing mails received and the build time, the MAC time, and also report time is around the time, around the, the same. Yeah, that's period in July, between July and, the, and the June and July. Yeah, this is my talk. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so we, we, we think this is from the same dropper, same generator, and also Mutest, is, Mutest name is also is good, useful to identify the APT sample or version. And this and case analysis simply supplements the, the tracking ghost net reports and also the median report because they do some high level, just describe the process, but we do the reverse engineering and the further analysis then it's much more good to give more details to you. And afterwards, as a malware analyst, we will find that do we need to analyze 10,000 samples from the single task force? It's too, it's too time consuming. Can you back to the office and say, uh, boss, I, did, I got a sample. I need to close the door for three days and analyze the sample like that? I suppose you, are, you should be fired, right? <laughs> three days and analyze it. No, you should know that how to, how to respond, what's the characteristic, right? And also, do you think about whether you, you get a sample and you think that you are already target? No, you, uh, then this is kind of traditional um, thinking or in, in, international before, because when we receive the malware, we don't think it's target or not. Another case too is calling Mr. X again. He's very free and always check email and always get, get this kind of target attack but I want, I want to help. And there's uh, another file name called Official Reporter List from the Legical, Legislative Council News. Um, this is our official email. This is the party extension. Then the Chinese is very official. The format is craft. And the most important thing is, if you trust Gmail, you, sh you, you suck. Okay, no problem. This is, uh, the name is kind of um, official reporter list of the Legis Legis Legislative Council. So you will open it. However, <laughs> I need to analyze, right? Because he wakes me up in six o'clock. He, he, he needs to treat me drinks or, or dinner, okay? And also then, need to say grassroot horse then. Do you know these two cute, these two horse? Don't know? Anyone knows? Oh, you know that? Yeah. yeah, okay, get it. But, but don't speak it to the, to the Chinese, okay? I just, okay, oh, no, just come here. Yeah, because I can't throw it. Yeah, okay. Uh, these two uh, uh, lovely animals is a is kind of a uh, motherfucker. Okay, <laughs> okay. But it's broke in the China internet because um, they use the grasswood horse instead, okay, in Chinese and also English, okay? I, I also throw this kind of door last year. You could read back to my video. And after the analysis, we do the DNA analysis. This is what we want to do. I find the samples, the Excel samples, I upload to our engine called APT Disser. We find that these samples is belongs to here. You find this is an evil central, evil circle. Very evil, you know. If you find you are targeted by this evil circle, Please take care. Extremely extreme care. Okay, this from China. Okay, <laughs> this also from China. Okay, but these samples is from here. We group the clustering from here, and the different color means different years, different kinds of year of the exploit of the build time years. Okay. The detail analysis will be from Benson. It will be much more cool. This is the old version. Then we got the exploit name, the build time, and the group C. Yeah. And this is the analysis. You you see it before. I don't want to, to take over it. This is about the group, the group, APT group. It's about is it a chopper. Always the chopper. Analyze the chopper first. And then inject the DLL. Inject the DLL to the uh, inject the exe to the uh, no inject the DLL to the exe I, I explore the exe, and this is the location of the CNC servers. 
28.5% CNC server are located in China for this sample, for this group. And in Hong Kong, as I said, I always support Hong Kong as a CNC central center in the Asia. So they got 28.57%. Okay. In Canada, it's not bad. They are on the third place. So we will, soon, we will soon brief you more about the analysis about our DNA clustering. For peace or warf war warfare, pen one. For peace, I would like to put in thousands of pawns images as a cap file and put a debug folder and show my sincere, nice, peaceful mind <laughs> to the CNC writer or the, or the secrets uh, on, on the uh, right? task, force, task force leader, you know. I'm very, very a nice man, okay, okay. <laughs> to enjoy the pawns and find me family. This is what's most important thing. <laughs> Fight back, okay, set up a CNC server, purchase malware pack, putting malicious PDF, document excels in the cap file, and they must open it, you, you, they must open it, right? They will read it, right? To see what's going on. It could be fun, excited but I've not tried it yet. So we have the prom from Chinese. Cooking beans on a fire kindled with beans, beanstalk. The beans whip into the pot, originally born from the self same roots. Why so eager to torture each other? You know, we can't do it the same against them, but we would like to see what could help to analyze and to see what we could help to this community. community. Um, special thanks to my VX fellows is Rantu and DDR, DDR <laughs> and analyzed these samples for me. And he, uh, Rantu is very old guy, uh, but he is very passionate to over the reverse engineering and an analysis of sample and write a detailed paper. Then please stay tuned. I will publish it and let you know. Okay, Benson, your turn, man. I prefer to use here. Yeah. I'm sorry then. I just leave out, without out, take care about it. Okay, uh, uh, my part uh, will be uh, another 30 minutes. Uh, as you can see, Anthony is so, his personality is so aggressive, and I'm kind of the opposite. That's why uh, when, when we work as a team, it's so fun to work together. Uh, most of the time, Anthony enjoys doing a lot of uh, manual analysis over these malwares. And actually, in Taiwan, lots of researchers, we have been receiving tons of malwares every day. And then we do a lot of these manual uh, work on a daily basis. But it, this is really time consuming. As you can see, malwares are now in uh, mass productions. So if you are doing this manually, then you are definitely falling behind. So this is why we really want to come up with uh, automatic systems so that we can easily classify whether this is uh, made by automatic tools or is actually made by human beings, APD groups. They are only being used once only and then throw it away. They will never show up again. If that's the case, then how we can go beyond these uh, situations and then try to understand who are behind these samples. So we want to automate all these process rather than uh, doing this manually. And you guys might recall uh, this uh, slogan, uh, well, this is not ghost in, the, in the uh, ghost in the browser. Well, Google says ghost in the browser, so they are good at 
goes in a browser, but not goes in the networks. And this is what we think. Uh, APT is actually goes in a network. Once they get into your network, they try to stay there. So they are not like, you know, uh, fast in and fast out. They actually uh, try to get into your network and then they try to stick there and then they never want to get out. So they try to stay inside, hide and seek, and then try to steal everything they can steal and then try to escalate the privilege until uh, they can steal more sensitive, more confidential data. In Chinese, that, that's how we return it, Wang uh, the Gui. The term was uh, first uh, defined by the, uh, by the US Air Force. They call it uh, advanced persistent threats, which we think uh, is, is very appropriate uh, because uh, by being advanced, it's, it's actually uh, relatively compared to the victims. So it's not necessary that I have to use the, the most uh, non patch zero-day exploit in order to uh, invade your system. As long as uh, I know that uh, you haven't patched these exploits, then I can invade you successfully. So this advance is more or less uh, in a re relative uh, manner. While uh, being persistent means that I'm really determined because I'm being supported, I'm being funded. Uh, in order to uh, invade your network, it's actually part of my year, year projects. I really have to get into a network, otherwise I, I will be, uh, I will not accomplish my missions. So that's how determined uh, I will be. So uh, all these victims, victims, we can see that uh, oftentimes they, are, they always have uh, good security controls. They have good sense of uh, security. And all these employees, they, they actually have good eyes. You know, they, they know how to see uh, uh, arrows in these spellings, arrows in these uh, social engineering, social engineering emails, but still they still get APT uh, attacked and then successfully, because there's really no way you can get away when you are being targeted by these APT task force because they are so determined, and the the emails are written so well that they are they look just like exactly from a genuine person. That's why you see Google are being owned. I say as well, and then many more. The reason we mentioned Stuxnet is because in order to launch the Stuxnet successfully, they, they actually uh, attacked uh, several, uh, several uh, companies in, in the science park in Taiwan in order to get a certificate so that they can sign these drivers. And then once they get these drivers, they, they sign these malware so that when people get attacked, the, the windows will not alert when they install these uh, malwares. And also Commodos, they invade Commodos to get all these certificates. So later on when we actually get these APD emails, a lot of these APD emails are being digital signed and also verified by Commodos. So, uh, we, we, well, for these companies, we never want to be, uh, they never want to be the headlines in these kind of situations. And of course, everyone knows this. And uh, this chart is actually from uh, McKinsey. They actually uh, analyze uh, a lot of data from IDC and also uh, Bureau of Labor uh, Statistics. Uh, from this chart, uh, it's actually telling you that uh, a lot of these large enterprise, they, they own lots of data. <coughs> Uh, so much data that ne they never knew that uh, they have least amount of data. For example, large enterprise typically own more than uh, a terabytes of data. So that's hundreds and thousands of enterprise in the states. And in fact, also hundreds of companies more own than a petabytes. So you have so many data that is so juicy. Uh, these hackers, they just want to target you and then try to see how they can do APD on you. So if, if you have too much data, then you have to protect it well. Otherwise, a uh, well, situation like Sony would, would happen again. So uh, this is some samples that uh, we, we share here, uh, what we receive uh, in, in Taiwan. 
and this is uh, from real case. For example, uh, a lot of uh, professors in school, uh, they, 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 would, they would receive these uh, on annual basis. For example, uh, receive these kind of call for papers and also uh, acceptance notifications from uh, people pretending from the National Science Council, sending the malicious PDF to them. And this is from a genuine uh, uh, email accounts, but that PDF is containing a malware inside, but that couldn't be uh, identified by uh, any antivirus tools on the market because definitely these uh, APD task force, they would do this QA before they, they release uh, these uh, phishing emails. So it's really hard to teach how these professors can get away from these uh, uh, targeted emails because they, there's definitely no way they can get away with their good eyes because that's a, a very genuine emails. And also, uh, these attackers, they will send you uh, invitations asking you to give a speech, asking you to give a talk. And then these people are also real people some professions uh, that really exist. And then again, you couldn't find all these malicious documents with existing antivirus tools. And uh, these are the statistics numbers that we are uh, receiving on daily basis in Taiwan. Uh, roughly uh, 20,000 suspicious emails are sent to uh, gov.tw on per day basis. And then out of these, uh, every month, about 4,000 to 500 are APT emails. And these are couldn't uh, be uh, identified by uh, any antivirus on the market. So we can say that uh, every month we can collect these amount of uh, samples. So uh, this is our research motivations. Uh, in the past, we see that these APD incidents happen again and again. This really implies that we, we need a better security controls because this is out of control. Uh, existing tools doesn't help. That's why incidents happen again and again. So uh, we have to uh, turn the table around. Otherwise, it's always the attacker in the dark and then uh, the victims in the light. And we have no ideas who are attacking us. And then uh, people also saying that APD is the new term, but old problems, and yet inevitable. Then that's really a, a, a very ironic situation. Because if it's an old problem, then we, we got to have a way to encounter it. But then uh, it seems so inevitable that we couldn't do anything with it. So uh, we are thinking that uh, actually we, we have so much uh, security control uh, right now, but none of these are designed to fight against uh, APD uh, issues. And then also because APD is highly targeted, uh, it's very hard to collect uh, these samples from uh, the way how we collect uh, viral samples. Right now, viral samples are being collected through a uh, honey or honey net, but these APD samples will never reach uh, all the honey nets that you uh, deploy. So the, the only way you get uh, APT is either through uh, intelligence exchange or uh, uh, by really deploying uh, some devices on these uh, classified personnel's uh, email box. Otherwise, you would never get these uh, uh, APT samples. So there is a Chinese saying that uh, we must first sharpen our tools. Otherwise, you wouldn't see the attacks going on. So our research direction is that uh, we, want, we want to analyze these uh, samples so that we can see uh, the groups behind these samples. In the past, it's always uh, receiving the viral samples and then we determine whether it's malicious or not, then that's it. We never, we never try to see uh, who are behind these viral samples. So we stop at determining whether it's malicious or not. And that's really a, a pity. And then from these APD samples, we also want to see if we can find out well, what's their plan. 
So what's the correlation between these samples? And probably we can uh, associate all these APD samples seeing that, oh, they are actually all targeting at this particular group. So we can, we can probably uh, come up with their ear, ear plan on uh, who are they targeting with. And then uh, also from a single one-off attack, we also want to see the trend. Because by seeing the trend, you can see how advanced these APD task force are. You can see uh, what kind of weapons they have been using. Because the weapons they use, they have to spend money to buy it. So you can see how well they are funded. And also you can see how persistent they are, uh, how many years they have been in this uh, cyberspace, and how active they are. Sometimes you see them uh, being so active maybe for one year, but then uh, they stay very silent for another year, but then all of a sudden become so active this year. So you can see all these trends very easily if you have uh, automated tools. But if you only have uh, one antivirus on your hand, then you can only see uh, one off attack once at a time. So uh, we try to do uh, digital forensics on all these APD samples. And these are some of the attributes we try to get from these samples. Uh, just to name a few, for example, uh, malware features, uh, what exploits are being used. So usually we associate these exploits with CV numbers so that you know exactly what CV exploits are being used. And also the CNC networks that are being leveraged. Because these CNC networks, uh, they, they usually uh, imply the, the, the stations that they deploy in different countries. And also uh, the emails, uh, who are they targeting? Who are they pretending they are? And uh, what's the content inside the emails? And also the, the victim's background, and also the time of attack. Usually uh, the time of attack uh, would, would matter because they, they try to do social engineering. So for example, when they send the meeting notes, the, the, the meeting notes will be associated with we will be very close to the meeting time. So the time of attack it also matters. And uh, how, how are we different from uh, malware study in the past? Uh, study in the past, they, they, they have an assumption that uh, all the information they analyze are very 100% uh, accurate. For example, if they do signature-based detection, they, they do exact match. So if you, if you doesn't match the signature, the pattern doesn't match the signature, then they will say it's not malicious. So that's how antivirus does. And for behavior-based profiling, if your behavior doesn't match the, the profile they did, then they will say you, you are not exhibiting a, a malicious behavior. And if you are not exhibiting your malicious behavior in a sandbox environment or, or uh, you pretend not to exhibit the malicious behaviors, then they cannot profile your uh, behaviors at all. So uh, they, they have an assumption that uh, they, can, they can see through you and they can observe the exact behavior you are exhibiting. But what we see is that malware uh, doesn't behave that way because they are usually packed, they are usually encrypted, and they are designed in a way that they, they don't want you to be analyzed easily. So you have to tolerate some errors inside, and that's why uh, some of the uh, theories that we use, they, they allow some errors and then allow some uh, uh, information being uh, loose. For example, we use some uh, rough set theory. So rough set theory is, is almost like the opposite of fuzzy. And then we also use data mining so that we can easily associate all these different attributes. And then we also use clustering so that later on you can see how we cluster all these different APD groups and then et cetera. So we, we use a lot of mathematics to help us uh, analyze our data. And then of course, uh, we, we not only use a static approach. In case where static approach doesn't work, we also use dynamic approach. Uh, our background comes from dynamic approach, so we, we, we know very well how to observe malware in a sandbox environment. We, we know very well how to trigger them in a dynamic environment, but uh, we know that it's very time consuming and you cannot replicate 
you cannot replace the required uh, parameters to, to, to trigger them. So dynamic approach is really the, the last actions that we will do. And so we will apply stake approach first. So it's, it's a, a multi-layer of uh, technology that we will apply. And some challenges are for dynamic analysis. For example, they, they will do encryptions. They will do anti-sandbox. They will do uh, domain functionalities. So they will not exhibit the behavior. They will sleep. They will detect if there's uh, mouse movements. Or they will even try to communicate with the external networks. And if they couldn't communicate with the CNC server, then they will not do anything. So in, in those cases, you, you definitely have to do static analysis. And then on the static analysis part, we, we actually, we also uh, implement lots of uh, parsers, lots of, uh, lots of uh, static analyzers on our end. So we, we try to analyze all these PE codes, all these shell codes, and then all these uh, known packers. So we implement all these well-known stuff, and then we do the static analysis part by ourselves. Later on, you can see the demo. Uh, our performance uh, for analyzing one uh, APD samples using one uh, computer is like uh, five seconds to seven seconds. And then we can finish the whole analysis. And the, the middle part is the, the data we're going to extract it uh, from these uh, malware sample. You can see that uh, if we can identify what exploit are being used, we will give it a name, for example, the CV number, and then what shell codes are being identified, and then uh, what kind of CNC network are being used, and then also uh, are there any suspicious structures. So we will also uh, walk through the, the suspicious uh, file structures. And then uh, we will also look, try to locate any known malwares that are being used. So for example, the, the PE and also these uh, code snippets. And then if, if we uh, try to run it in a dynamic environment, we we'll also try to say that, well, when it's being executed, uh, where it would hook in the runtime environment, uh, what registry key it will try to uh, modify. Then if you are being compromised, then how you can uh, try to uh, remediate yourself. And then once we extract all these data from the samples, uh, we will try to normalize it into uh, APD, at APD attributes because now we will try to do the clustering. So we will do the, do the uh, normalize first. And then uh, this screenshot is actually uh, to share uh, the, the beauty of extracting all these uh, stuff from the binaries. Of course, we can easily get all these binary doing it uh, manually, but with a system, we can get this data very easily. And some of the interesting stuff we get from these uh, binary strings is uh, a new trend like this. Anyone use Plug before? Plug is very famous in Asia, but I'm, I'm, I think uh, Twitter is more famous here in the States. Uh, can you guys uh, make a guess what this uh, person is talking about here? This is definitely not a human language, right? Yeah, this one is being uh, encrypted. But we actually found out all these conversations from the APD samples that we, we, uh, we analyzed. We, we noticed that uh, from all these APD samples, they tend to communicate with the, the plug. So if it's in the US uh, case, they would tend to communicate with Twitters. And then they will communicate with uh, different Twitter accounts, but they speak similar language, a language that we couldn't understand, but a language that they all encrypted with the same key. And if you decrypted the, the text, you will find out that it's actually uh, 
a CNC info. So they, they started not to put the CNC information inside the sample. They put the CNC information uh, on these uh, web applications, websites, so that uh, they can easily get it through po 80s And then they can easily uh, redirect all these botnets activities uh, easily. Uh, once we get all these uh, normalized data, we do the clustering. And when we do the clustering, uh, all the mathematic methodology uh, help us, for example, to, to uh, pick up the important attributes. Before we apply, math, for example, before we apply rough sets, all these attributes are equal uh, significance. But then after we apply rough sets, rough sets will tell us that uh, of for example, malware type is more significant than exploit type. And CNC server is even more significant than the other attributes. And what the coefficients should be. So we get a, a very nice formula for these attributes. And then based on these uh, nice formulas, we come up with a, a good clustering on these ABD task force based on the samples. And then we call that uh, fingerprints for these APD task force. So they distribute so much APD samples to all these victims, but they have no ideas. Actually, they are also disclosing their fingerprints. So uh, to, to make a common basis when comparing all these data, we actually use a common, uh, common samples so we use the sample from Mira. It's, it's a, a public data, a contagio dump. So there are about like 242 APD samples. So if you, you guys are interested, you can also download it from Mira's website. That's the sample that we use. And we also compare our detection rate with antivirus. But before we, we mention the detection rate, let's see how the antivirus uh, perform when they are scanning against these uh, viral samples collected from honeypots. As I mentioned earlier, uh, APD samples will, will seldom reach these honeypots. These are all made from automatic uh, tools. So as you can see, all these antivirus perform very satisfactory, right? Uh, all, almost like 100%, 99 point something. And this is from Shadow Server. They update this uh, on a monthly basis. But then when it's applied on APD samples, antivirus really doesn't work well because they never get the signatures easily from these uh, honeypots they deploy. So these uh, samples hardly enter their laboratory. So usually the, the, the time when they get the signatures takes much longer than usual. So uh, these uh, data is, is what we tested uh, two weeks ago. As you can see, uh, most of the vendors, they, they fail to qualify uh, more than uh, 60%. And the one that we're going to uh, share with you online, the uh, APD Deezer, that you can try online. And it's free, available. This one has a detection rate of more than 94.6. And of course, it's not only on Mira samples. Uh, once we announced this, uh, so many people be began to upload their uh, APD samples as well. And you can see the graph becomes bigger and bigger. The community really contrib contribute a lot. And then uh, the, the overall APD task force graph uh, becomes uh, much larger than the original 200 something. So this is the, the clustering results. After we analyze all these samples, we actually can see the, the task force behind these samples. If you only analyze these samples individually, you have no idea uh, which groups are behind these samples. But then when we use all the methodology that we mentioned, we actually can see that they, there is one group that is very big 
which we call Group A. Of course, we, we, we also have the ge geographical location, but it's too sensitive, so we don't mention it here. So you see Group A, which is huge. And then you, you also see a, a second small one is Group B, and then you see Group C. So we will take the, the top three here and then give you more detailed data. And the different color here uh, means that uh, when these APD emails or these APD samples are being collected or hit the, the victims, so you can see uh, their active uh, time. For example, you look at the group A, you see that uh, most of their active time is last year, to, uh, to, uh, 2010. And then for this year, they only have a few. This is based on Mila sample, so it's 242. But later on, you will see that after the, the communities submit lots of samples, you see the graph change dramatically. You see new groups coming up. So these are the top three. So for group A, You see, they actually leverage uh, CNC server like 23. And these are the weapons they have been using repeatedly. Some are pretty new. For example, this one. This, this one is the one that, that have been used to attack uh, RSA. And then this one is group two. And then this one is group three. And then if you know the, the market price for all these exploits, then you can see how well they are funded. And this is the, the CNC servers they, they try to abuse. And you can see the countries are like Taiwan, US, Hong Kong. So these three dominate more than 50. So I would say that the reason Taiwan is being abused a lot is because the, the bandwidth in Taiwan is very stable and reliable, and, and geographically it's very close in Asia. And also Hong Kong, Anthony mentioned, Hong Kong, they, they respect your privacy so much that when you do something evil, they, they don't even try to dis disclose your privacy when you, have a, when you host a machine in ISP. So, And then more than that is uh, you can also see the attack graph for every malware that has been used. So you can see the, what happened when, when, when you double click the attachment. And you can also see what happened when you got infected. And even the bug comments that are involved inside this uh, APD group. And these bot comments are very uh, helpful in identifying the APD task force as well. And if we only look at APD group A alone, you can see this group A highly rely on CNC server in Taiwan. So if we look at three groups together, Taiwan is only like you know, 20% to 30%, but if you look at group A only, more than 50%, like 50% of their CNC are located in Taiwan. And this one is interesting. Uh, this one is group E. And this one, uh, we, we also identify it's actually from, it's, it's from Korea. Uh, the reason that we can identify this is from the, la the language, the language they, they actually compile it with. And then uh, the interesting part is that uh, all the samples that we receive from these uh, are being uh, signed by uh, Commodore certificate. And, if we, and when we submit to virus total, uh, only uh, one antivirus can detect that. So it's a very uh, low profile uh, APD attack.
So uh, later on, I will do a, a demo of the, the system so that you, you ha can have a feel uh, what you can expect uh, when you do it online. And also something that uh, uh, we, we, didn't, we, we are still uh, working on. So from the meta sample sets, uh, we, we can easily identify the major task force behind these samples. So the more samples you submit, then you can easily identify uh, how many different groups are actually behind all these samples. And then you, you can easily identify uh, how many weapons that have been purchased, uh, how many different exploits they, they have been using repeatedly, utilize, and then one interesting thing is that uh, they keep on changing the exploits they use, but the embedded malware tend to stay the same. So the, the, in, the in, inside these exploits, uh, the malware they use, what we call uh, uh, remote administration tools, they tend to use the same IT tools. So uh, these uh, embedded malware is limited to a few one. So for example, in, in the States, it will be probably like a poison IV, will be a very famous one. And then uh, we also found out uh, with these APD samples, we actually uh, extract hundreds of attributes. But among these attributes, very, very significant ones are CNC servers and malware use. And less significant ones is the exploit type, even though APD task force, they will use uh, a dozens of different exploit types. And if we look at the language used in these APD samples, uh, one thing that we can say is uh, like one fourth of the samples are from China, and then some samples is from uh, Korea, and then we also have samples from Russia and France. And then if you look at uh, what uh, CNC servers are being abused, the, the top one would be uh, Taiwan, US, and then Hong Kong. And then uh, this one is uh, readily available online where you, you, you guys can try. It's, uh, when you uh, upload a, a binary, it will uh, give you a graph, and then it will also tell you whether it's an APD uh, file or not, or it's only a normal uh, virus. So if it's on only a normal virus, then it will not, uh, it will not put you into the graph. So this graph will only draw an APD task force graph. And in this case, you see that uh, gr uh, gradually we see more and more uh, APD emails are being signed by Commodore certificate. So you see emails have been digitally signed and then verified. And then this is from a very new group. Previously, we mentioned that green color indicates it's this year. So this group starts being very active uh, from this year. and they don't exist in uh, Mira's sample. They, they just show up uh, after the community start to submit their APD samples. And then, uh, so I, I will demo this one here. So this one is, uh, it's also an IPD email, same from uh, someone I would trust, because it's, it's same from an uh, academic uh, institution. And basically, it's saying that uh, uh, greeting, greeting something, and then it's also a PDF. And as you can see that uh, Google doesn't alert me with uh, a virus emails. And also, when I save as in my computer, the, the Microsoft antivirus security essential also doesn't alert me as well.
But then uh, this is the APD diesel that you guys can try. I then can upload this one. Okay, it says that uh, your sample is of IPD grade, so it's 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 a good quality. It means that it's not a normal uh, viral sample. And then it's from Group A, so. It not only tell you that it's malicious. Remember that uh, when we tr when we try to open it inside Google, Google doesn't tell us it's malicious, and also our antivirus tool doesn't tell us it's malicious. So f these three tools of first it tells us it's malicious, and it also tells us that we are being targeted by the biggest uh, APD task force. So since we are part of their plan, they will never give up uh, until they. They are successful. And as you can see, this graph is much, much bigger compared to my, my previous slides. Because the, the more the community contribute, the bigger the, the graph will be. And then we, we also have, uh, what we are still developing is, uh, uh, we try to put this together with a like a, like a dashboard so that you can see a, a more holistic view to see the trend. And then we also try to associate it with a Google Map, which is uh, very fun. For example, we, we try to see Taipei. And then later on, we, we try to uh, make it together with the street view. So probably you can see a hacker is sitting there on the street. Yeah. <laughs> real time. And this is something the US can do easily, right? Because you, you guys got a satellite. OK, yeah. Pretty cool, right? Actually, if you begin a CNC or a deploy CNC, or you locate it, man. Actually, it's my honor to work with Benson, Batman, and PK to be a founder execute a uh, secure lab than to give this research this, like that. Actually for me, you know, as I, as Benson said, we, every time we do the manual, manual analysis, it's quite very time consuming. And even from the same, same generator, we can't expect, respect what is the task force behind. We need to identify the evils behind, you know. Otherwise, you never just, every day you take a routine job to analyze, it's meaningless. We need to escalate the an analyst, analysis level, one up more level, to, so you can make your plan, strategic plan, on your how, is, how to respond to incidents and how to make the controls instead of just finding different, vents, different boxes, firewalls, IPS, and you say you have done the control. This is not our story in the future. Oh, not yet, actually. <laughs> Actually, I, I simply get a how to get a PowerPoint. Yeah, I I have not used the Windows environment for many years. <laughs> oh, final words then. Um, actually, we could reach us at um, www.secure-lab.com, and we keep collecting samples and um, enhance the capability to analyze and observe APT DNA family in more accurate manner. This is what we want to do. Want to do, and deep technical analysis. Of our sample is still needed, right? But it's helpful for DNA footprint analysis. It is an incremental efforts we wanted to make, and we would like to publish our we will publish our follow up message at DevCon speaker for corner, and together we make the homeland secured. And also special special thanks to our members in and also like Benson, PK, and also Batman and other fellows in secure lab teams and troop groups members and UXRL members and our family and fellows. Um, this is our email address, 
and also our blog mess our blog. And one more thing is, perhaps we will board members. Are you convinced yet? Thank you. <laughs>